What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to build a simple URL shortener in Python using the Flask web framework. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to implement a simple URL shortener in Python Flask today. And the basic idea of such a service or of such a tool is that you put in some long URL, some long link that you don't want to send around because it doesn't look good and you shorten it, you map some other shorter URL to that link to that destination. So for example, if I open up Notepad here, uh, let's say we have some uh, HTTPS colon slash slash www and then, uh, or maybe not, not this, maybe something like my long subdomain dot my long domain dot com slash something slash something else and then some parameters or something like this. You want to take this and you want to map it to something that's better. And let's say our service is called neural shorten.com and maybe we have a second domain that we also own which is called nshrt.com for example. Uh, what we can do is we can just map some generated string like this one here to that URL. So this would be our service. Someone puts in that URL into our service. They get this link as a result. And whenever someone visits that link, they are redirected to that page. And then maybe you can also add some analytics or something, but we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to map this URL to this. Now, of course, if you want to do this with an actual URL, with an actual domain, you need to own it. So you cannot just run it on localhost, which is what we're going to do but the application is going to be the same. So the Flask web application that is going to shorten the URL and map everything will be the same. But in our case, instead of having something like neural shorten, we're going to have localhost like this. Uh, but of course, if you run the same thing somewhere else, it's going to give you uh, the same principle here, the same idea. So of course, we're going to need Flask on our system. So open up the command line and type pip install Flask with a lowercase f, I think. Uh, and then we can start with the application. So I'm going to open up a new Python file main.py. Uh, and we're going to start with some very basic imports from flask, we want to import the flask object or the flask class itself, the application, we want to be able to render HTML files. So we import render template, we're going to redirect to other endpoints, we're going to dynamically get the URL for other functions and endpoints. Uh, and we want to be able to handle post requests. So we're going to also use the request or requests in general. Uh, and we want to be able to distinguish between get and post requests. So we're going to use this uh, import here as well. Then we're also going to import actually, I should do that above here, I think we're going to import random and we're going to import string so that we can generate some URLs. Um, and this is the first thing that we're actually going to do. Now, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define an application, which we're going to just call flask. I mean, we're going to call it app, we use the flask constructor, we pass a name, uh, and we're going to have a dictionary, which is going to be empty shortened URLs. Now, of course, if you want to do this as an actual, um, as an actual service professionally with multiple, um, with many, many different people, sending you URLs that you want to shorten for them, you don't want to store this just in a dictionary, you would want to use a database, not just a JSON file or something like this. Uh, but for now, we're going to just keep it as a simple uh, dictionary. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to implement a function generate, generate short, short URL, let me just move my mic because I'm not seeing my keyboard. Um, and here we're going to pass now um, the length, the default is going to be six so that we can adjust this easily here. Um, and all we want to do here is we, we just want to generate some random characters. So we're going to say characters equals string dot ASCII uh, letters, and then plus string dot digits, because we also want to include digits. And then we're just going to say that the short URL that we're generating is going to be um, an empty string, which is going to join the following thing random dot choice, we're going to choose from the characters for placeholders, since we don't need the variable here in range, and then length. So basically, this just means that we can, um, we, we get from this collection, six letters, probably you could also do that with sample um, with without replacing or with replace uh, with replacement. Um, but yeah, this also works. So we're going to say then return short URL. 
And then we're going to create a simple index endpoint. So we're going to just say app dot route, we're going to have the default route slash, we're going to allow for two methods here, get and post. And the idea here is that if we just get we're going to just get the index HTML file, which we're going to create here. And if we post we want to add a new URL. So we're going to have a form where we can uh, insert a URL. And then it's going to generate a short one, it's going to map it in a dictionary, and then we're going to be able to use this. So uh, we're going to say here, if or actually first, let me define a function, we're going to call this index, we're going to say if request dot method equals post. What we want to do here, by the way, we don't need a colon here. Um, if the method is post, what we're going to do is we're going to say the long URL is going to be whatever the user passed. So it's going to be request dot form, we don't we haven't created this form yet, we will create it here in a second. Um, we're going to have something in that form that we're going to call long URL. Um, and we're going to take that we're going to generate a short URL using the generate short URL function with the default length of six. Uh, and then we're going to map the long or we're going to map the short URL to the long URL. So we're going to say, while short URL in shortened URLs. Um, like this, we're going to say, um, or basically, maybe there is a better way to do this. I mean, actually, this would work. So what we want to do is we want to check if the short URL is already part of uh, of the dictionary. So if we already have such a URL. Um, I think I wrote it like this, because it's just less code, but I think maybe it's not at as obvious was what it's doing. But essentially, I'm saying, okay, while there is such a URL already in the list, generate a new one, but probably you could also do that with a while not uh, done and then an if statement to be more explicit, but we're going to just keep doing it like this here. So while the short URL is in shorted URLs dot keys. So if it's already inside of it, what we're going to do is we're going to just regenerate it, we're going to generate a new one, and we're going to check again. And sooner or later, we will leave that loop. And then we're going to say shortened URLs, short URL is going to be mapped to the long URL. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to just return here a string shortened URL. And then we can say this is going to be just a uh, short URL. We're actually we're going to have to put this, let me use an S string for this. We want to use shortened URL equals and then we're going to say it's that but this is just the last part. So actually what we want to do is we want to say uh, that this is going to be the request request dot URL underscore root, and then uh, short URL, because this is going to then not just take uh, because those six characters are just the part after the URL. So if we have, for example, neural shortened dot com slash something, the short URL is just this slash something. And here we want to have the actual uh, root URL that we can return here. And otherwise, if it's not post, if it's get, we're going to just return render template to index dot HTML. Um, yeah, so that works, I guess. And then we're going to say the the main part is now, of course, the redirection, because now we have the mapping, but now we also need to apply the mapping. So whenever someone comes to our service, and they type slash something, this slash something should be taken as a short URL, and we should try to map it to a long URL. So we're going to say here, app dot route slash, and then we're going to use short URL here. So whatever we get here is going to be considered to be a short URL. Uh, we're going to call this function redirect underscore URL short underscore URL. This is now the same parameter. So what we pass the function is what we get here as a uh, URL parameter. We're going to just say that the long URL is going to be shortened URLs dot get short URL, I'm not going to handle errors here now. Uh, I mean, actually, we, we could just return if it doesn't find it. So so basically, what we can do is we can say if long URL, we're going to just return a redirect. And we're going to redirect to 
the long URL. And in case there is no long URL, we're going to just uh, we're going to just return URL not found and then maybe 404 as a code here. Uh, yeah, so that should work. And then what we're going to do finally is we're going to just say if underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore main app dot run debug equals true. And finally, what we need to do is we need to also implement the index HTML file. It's going to be quite simple for this. We're going to create a new directory templates. Inside of that directory, we're going to create a new HTML file index.html. And basically, we can keep the structure here, uh, URL shortener. And then here in the body, we're going to say h1 URL shortener. And then we want to have a simple form, the method of the form is going to be posts, we're going to have an action, the action is going to go to uh, URL underscore, actually, do we need the URL for here? We don't use it, right? Let me just check with my prepared code if I used it there. But I don't think so. No, I don't think that we're using the URL for here, we're just using it in the HTML file, but we don't need to import it here. Um, so URL for and what we want to get is the index URL because we're going to post on the index because the index function takes get and post requests. And here we then just post this form. The important thing, of course, is that we have this element called long URL. So we need to have some input with the name long URL. We're going to call this input or we're going to write input type text. The name is going to be long underscore URL placeholder is going to be enter the long URL. And then we're going to say, uh, actually, we're going to say button type submit shorten. And I think that should be it. This should be enough to get this service running. Let me open it in the browser. Um, this is the shortener. Now let's go ahead and say, for example, HTTPS, there you go. This, this is already what I tried here, we're going to shorten neural nine. And now in this case, it tells me that the shortened URL is whatever the domain is in my case, now it's localhost port 5000. If you're running this on an actual server with an actual domain, uh, you can, uh, you will get the domain here. And now I can just take this, I can enter it in a new tab. And you're going to see, hopefully, that this brings me to neuralnine.com. And I can go ahead now and do something else google.com. Okay, it needs to be a URL. So like this HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com. Shorten. Actually, did I run the proper file here? Why does it realize it has to be a URL? Is this am I running this script here? Or is this my let me just check again, because I'm a little bit surprised that it realizes that please enter a URL. Okay, nice. HTTPS, and then let's go with google.com shorten copy. There you go, Google. And I can do that now for different URLs. Of course, what you would want to do here um, if you're doing this, um, if you're running this professionally, you would want to store everything. So every time someone Every time you write something to, to the dictionary, you would want to save it. For example, you could say something like uh, import JSON, and then you can say every time we want to do something, we're going to say with open, and then I don't know, URLs dot JSON. In writing mode, we're going to say JSON dot dump. And we want to dump the JSON, uh, we want to dump the dictionary. So uh, what is the first argument here? I think the first one is the object, the second one the file pointer. So we want to dump shortened URLs into a file called uh, my URLs dot JSON or whatever. And then of course, the important thing is every time you start the application, you would want to, uh, to load it in again. So let's just see if that works. Let's say again, neural nine shorten. Now I should probably have a file here. Do I have a file here? With open urls.json? Why doesn't it work? 
Oh, because I'm very intelligent. Of course, we need to pass the file pointer. I already have the JSON file name here. Let me run this again. There you go. Neural nine shorten. Why doesn't it work now still? Okay, so I figured out the problem. The problem was that I was still running uh, a Flask server, the Flask application of the prepared code. So we were not actually running this code here, but the code that I prepared for the video, which is also why we're not able to input anything but a URL, even though we didn't implement that here, because what we need to do here is we need to say input type URL, and we need to also say required for this to be the case. Um, then also here we want to say URL shortener. And then now if I run this, this should work. So I'm going to run this again. Uh, I'm going to execute this again. We're going to say here neural9.com shorten, we get the result here. And now we can see URLs.json. Now I can enter another URL. For example, google.com shorten, there you go. And now we have another one. And then of course, we would have to load that uh, every time we run the application. So we would have to uh, load the file, we would have to load uh, shortened URLs here. So maybe something like with open urls.json in reading mode as f shortened urls equals f dot read, or actually, we're going to say json dot load f directly from the file stream. And that should then work, I guess. So I should be able to take that identify here now, say localhost this, and this should redirect me to neural nine. All right. So this is how you implement a simple URL shortener using Python flask. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment to the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.